Hi, welcome to valuationpodcast.com, a podcast and video series about all things related to business and valuation. My name is Melissa Gregg, and I provide online divorce mediation and valuation services in St. Louis, Missouri. Today, we will discuss preserving a family business when the owners divorce with Bob Boyd. He's a divorce lawyer in Atlanta. He's also the co-founder of Boyd, Collar, Nolan, Tuggle, and Roddenberry, and is a leader in family law who has received recognition from his colleagues across Georgia and the nation for his work in high net worth divorce litigation and contested custody cases. Let's go back to the business owner is ready to file for divorce, right? And so maybe they file, maybe they've contacted you. You know, what do you then typically see will happen when these two people own the business together and get divorced in the state of Georgia? We mm. talked briefly about it, but like kind of give the lay of the land of what is, ha- you know, if there's anything happening in Georgia or ha- what should they expect in this process? Well, that's a great question. But- because with delays, with the pandemic, with jury trials, with bench trials, like all of these things, I don't think people have any clue about. So maybe that you can give them just kind of a an idea of what to expect. Sure. Well, like with most things in a divorce, uh, I tell folks, to the extent you can maintain the status quo, it's going to be better for everybody. And that especially holds true with a family business. If, if, if we start out the case and the, the people are at each other's throats about how the business is going to be run and how money is going to be taken out or invested, we're going to end up in a courtroom. Uh, somebody's going to be asking a judge to appoint a special master or a receiver. And then the business is going to be taken out of your hands. You're not, you're not really going to get to run your business the way you would like to do it. And so that's, that's why I, I just, I can't overemphasize how important it is to try to, even if you, you hate each other's guts and don't trust each other, you've got to try to put that on the back burner and keep the business viable so that you at least have options, whether you want to be bought out or whether you want to sell it to a third party, because the last thing you want to do is be at each other's throats and run the business in the ground where it has no value. Mm-hmm. Well, and let's let's go before the pandemic. You know where you you get divorced and you file and you're having these great years in the business, and then that year that you're filing, all of a sudden things tank, and you're like, well, yeah, I told you it's all it's all reliant upon me, and the industry is going to hack, and you know the future is bleak. What tell people how the attorneys and experts and judges see that? Because we do kind of see through it, right? But what does it tell the judges? Well, one of the things, and obviously this is very dependent on the type of business it is. Uh, it's you know, the, the past 18 months have been extraordinary, if you will. Um, but I think that's why the valuation experts would tell you if they have the data, they would like to use five years as opposed to one year, two years, because the five years is going to give a more accurate valuation. Um, I think that what, what we have seen is that I won't say we ignored 2020, but if we had historic data for several years before that, that carried much more weight than what happened in 2020. Mm-hmm. Uh, it, do you apply a little discount for for that year? Well, you have to, but um, we're more interested in the historic record of the business. And I think that's what I've seen uh, parties ultimately agree on. And the few cases that we've been able to try in the in the last year, that's what I've seen judges do. Yeah. And when you talk about that, I think what the business owner needs to understand is it's not only about the business, it could be about your income potential. It could be about, um, you know, anything that's kind of related to the cash flow into the marriage that we're going to look at potentially an average. We're going to look at several years. So, you know, everybody's like, oh, well, I'll just quit my job or I'll, 
you know, uh, stop working or I just won't show up at the business. You know, all of those things um, are going to be perceived a certain way. That's and right. and I think that that's what you have to understand that that one thing that all of a sudden reduces the income or, or tanks the business people we may still look back and say well it's still worth something because we're looking at an average that's right. of historical earnings and people are like oh yeah it so it didn't work right it didn't work for you to manipulate the situation